problem with a good introduction is uh, it, you're, you're doomed to a disappointment afterwards. Uh, <laughs> you just peaked and, and it's downhill from there. Um, what I'm going to do in the next uh, 40 minutes or so, uh, hopefully leaving at least that much time for uh, a conversation with you, uh, is provide a quick outline of what's going on in the world of journalism, why it's going on, uh, and what that implies about what the journalism of the 21st century needs to be, or what we as citizens require of our next journalism. Half, 50% of all the classified advertising that existed in newspapers is now gone. And the rest, the other 50%, is likely to be gone in the next five years. 100% of the classified advertising, gone. Why? Because Monster.com and Realtor.com and all these other dot-coms, which frankly the news industry could have developed and didn't, are ways, are, have provided a superior way to get that information. And you add in Craig, Craigslist, which is a free, or semi-free classified listing as person to person, and that revenue has just disappeared. So that's one part of it. The other part of it is that the interface that we have as consumers with news is very different online than it is in print or in television. In print, you open up the newspaper and you say, okay, I'm waiting to, tell, to find out what the uh, Providence uh, Journal is going to tell me today. Oh, they put this on page one, they put that on page two. Oh, and look, there's a half-page ad from Sleepy's. Uh, gee, I wonder what mattresses they've got on sale today. Um, and, and what's very clear from the research is that the advertising that people see in a newspaper is another form of content. And they like to interact with it. They can choose to look at it or not. And often, as those of you who are, are we're in the newspaper business know, that advertising is very detailed. It's got a lot of information in it, prices, exactly how long that sale's gonna last. How many of you know the JNR computer ad in the New York Times that's got, you know, you can take, you take 20 minutes to read the thing. It's got everything there. Um, <coughs> online, we are hunter-gatherers for news and information. And you Google in what you're looking for, and uh, you find, you search through the links that look like what they are gonna get the closest to answering your question, and when you finally click on that link, you really don't want a pop-up ad to happen right at the moment that you're gonna finally look at the story that you've taken 45 seconds to hunt down or two minutes to find it, and you finally got to the good stuff. That's the story you want. Yikes, what's that? Get that forward off my content, please. So the interface that we have with advertising is very different. And what's behind this number dropping so much? Well, advertising in newspapers works great when you're the one newspaper in town, and you can charge a lot, and that's the only way to reach people. But there's no scarcity of websites. Uh, and so, it, uh, even if my website's got a lot of traffic, there are a lot of other websites that cumulatively have a lot of traffic too. So I can't charge very much. In fact, I can charge less and less every day per click. Uh, you know, per user for an online app. Um, so what we need to understand is that the audience to, the, to many traditional news uh, institutions is actually growing. Uh, the notion that the newspaper is a dying industry because no one wants to read it, well that's actually not what's happening. The audience to the New York Times today is the largest it's ever been, and it's growing in ways that couldn't 10 years ago or 15 years ago. The New York Times sells 1.2 million copies every day, okay? Now, there's a thing called the pass-along rate and all this other stuff. To figure out how many people read the New York Times in the course of a week, there's a lot of math you do, but basically you come up with a number that's maybe seven or eight million people. Different people read the New York Times in the course of a week or a month. <coughs> 15.6 million different people use the New York Times website every month. So any way you look at it, 
they've probably doubled the total universe of readers who read the New York Times with their website. That's terrific, right? That's spectacular. The New York Times has got bigger reach, more demand, more popular than it's ever been. So what's the problem? The problem is they make 90% of their revenue from the print edition, the part that's shrinking. They make only 10% of their revenue from the internet. And they can't figure out a way to make that grow anymore. It stopped growing because of the situation that's going on with online advertising. The only place where the internet, where internet advertising is really growing and is really successful is in search advertising. Why? Because before you get to the content, you're looking for the content. You're looking for goods and services. You're looking for the answer to something. And the search ads pop up, and they're like another form of content. They're, like other, they're just like the links you're looking for. But that's happening at the level of search. That's happening at the level of Google or Yahoo. And by the way, to make that work, you have to have a huge amount of market share because the, those search ads are plus <coughs> pennies. Pennies. Um, that's why Google is very successful because it has two-thirds, 66% of all the search in the United States goes through Google. That's why they make money. Yahoo, which controls 20% of search in the United States, is a company in trouble because that amount of market share is not enough, given the price of search engines, uh, of search advertising, to fuel the company's growth. Um, Yahoo is a company in trouble that people think needs to be bought or have or merged or something if it's going to survive. Um, so the prospects here for the news business to survive are, frankly, that it needs to invent a new revenue engine for the 21st century that is not advertising if journalism is going to survive online. In many ways, it was a happy accident that in the 20th century, a commercial activity, advertising, subsidized a civic good, journalism. It was not really true in the 19th century. That's not how journalism was financed. Journalism, for the most part, was a partisan activity, and the website and, and, and the newspapers were operated for most of that century and, uh, uh, and most of American history until the mid-19th century uh, as, um, uh, as, a, as lost leaders for parties. Uh, we began to see a period of time in the latter part of the 19th century where newspapers could make some money uh, just from circulation. It was really in the very end of the 19th century and then in the 20th century that commercial advertising became the source that financed journalism. And what's happening now is that is disintegrating. That is going away. And it's increasingly clear, I think it's clearer today than it was a year ago, certainly much clearer than it was three years ago, that advertising online is never, at least in the forms that we think of it, is never going to be enough to subsidize journalism as we know.